Hey there, this is your pal Pally, and welcome back to Get Her Raid. Siege of Ogamar is out, and now so is this guide. Fallen Protectors is the second boss in Siege, and as someone posted in the comments on my PTR video, we always seem to need a council fight in a large tier. This fight definitely requires two tanks, and I've now seen it both two and three healed, so whatever you prefer. For those of you who saw the PTR guide on this, I'll note that the fight only had some minor changes so many of my descriptions of mechanics will be the same as that PTR guide. So as I said, this is a council style fight, and each boss will transition at 66 and 33% health and do some different things. Once you get done with that transition, the fight goes back to normal and you continue to deal with the bosses. I'll go through each boss in turn and describe both their normal abilities and their desperate measures transition phase abilities. Brook Stone Toe is a boss that needs tanked and faced away from the raid. He does a frontal cleave ability called Vengeful Strikes that's supposed to hit hard. As long as the tank is aware of it coming and pops their active mitigation, it's really not that bad at all. He also tosses out Corrupted Brew as a missile-like projectile that targets a random raid member. You can easily avoid the Corrupted Brew as it has a long travel time. Lastly, he does a combo of Clash and Corruption Kick. Basically, he pulls someone in the raid to him and then starts spinning, doing a crap ton of damage to anyone caught within the spinning kick. Lesson here is get out quickly. Stone Toe's Desperate Measures phase is that he disappears and summons three adds called Embodied Gloom, Misery, and Sorrow. You have to kill all three before you can go back to DPSing Stone Toe. Gloom chucks out Corruption Shocks, which are basically bolts that hit people for 200k and anyone within 4 yards. It is interruptible. Misery must be tanked by the Stone Toe tank, and does a frontal cleave smash to the ground called Defiled Ground. Just don't stand in front of him and make sure he's tanked. Lastly, the Embodied Sorrow is the trickiest. He'll start a cast of Inferno Strike on a ranged or healer. That person will be marked with an arrow and have a red circle around them. When the cast finishes, that person will be hit with a 1.2 million damage hit split among the raids members within the red circle. Obviously, you need to stack up on that person to split the damage. We chose to have the ranged and healers stack on Sorrow and kill it off first while sharing the damage of Inferno Strikes. Meanwhile, Melee went after Gloom and kept it interrupted, and of course the tank took Misery and waited until we were done killing off the other two before bringing it to the raid to kill it off. Once you kill all three adds, Stone Toe comes back out and starts doing his normal abilities. Oh, and also note, during any desperate measures of the bosses, the other two bosses will continue to do their normal abilities, so keep that in mind as I go through the other two protectors. Next up is He Softfoot. He is a roguelike protector who does some stuns and puts out some bleeds. The stun he does is called Gouge, and it hits the tank he is currently focused on. Immediately after stunning the tank, he will fixate on a random raid member and go after them. He doesn't hit terribly hard at this point, but it's advisable to kite him until the tank can get out of the stun and taunt Softfoot back. It is possible for the tank to avoid this whole mess by turning his back to the boss right before Gouge goes out. If the tank does that, he'll only get bounced back a little bit, and nothing else bad will happen. Softfoot also will drop some poison pools on the ground. Obviously don't stand in them, but that's mainly something the tank has to worry about. His other major ability during the encounter is called Garrote, and it is a bleed he puts on a random raid member. It hits decently hard and cannot be dispelled. Note that all of the Garrotes out there will be cleared when he goes into his Desperate Measures phase. Speaking of his desperate measures, Softput spawns an ad called Mark of Anguish, which roots and fixates on a raid member. That raid member gets an extra action button and can pass the fixation to another raid member. Basically, the deal here is that you don't want someone taking this ad to the face for too long. Passing it between a few raid members before giving it to the Softfoot tank is probably best. We tried to pass it to one or two people, and then once it got about 50%, we pass it to the tank for the rest of the phase. Moving on to the last boss, Sun Tenderheart, the Priestess. She doesn't need to be tanked and casts a number of spells onto the raid. 
Her main spell is called Shaw Seer. It will do a decent amount of damage like a priest's Mind Seer and radiate that damage from the person. Just stay spread for heals and ranged. It is interruptible, but you'll only interrupt her current cast and she'll just do it again right away. The other spell she puts out is Shadow Word Bane. This is a dispellable dot that ticks pretty hard and will spread. Healers will need to keep on top of dispelling it as it's cast frequently and spreads fast. If you are having trouble with it, just assign a healer per group or something along those lines. If there are two in one group, just say the primary healer for that group takes the top one on the list and the other healers will help out on the other one. Lastly, she will periodically cast Calamity, which takes 30% off of everyone's health in the raid. Tenderheart's Desperate Measures can be one of the roughest. She will form a bubble that reduces the damage taken by the raid by 35%. After that, she'll cast some pulsing raid-wide shadow damage. Then she spawns some adds that come out. The goal is to kill off the sets of adds while being stacked up to reduce the damage going out. Raid CDs are probably recommended here. The ad sets will share a health pool, so do what you can to cleave them down quickly. Strategy-wise, we went for an approach of rotating between Sun first, then He, then Rook. After that, we did that rotation again, and then got to the last part of the encounter where you bring them down at the same time. I've seen a dozen different reasons for doing this all different ways, but it just seems that on normal mode, the order probably doesn't matter as much as it might on Heroic. I will note that Rook has the most health out of all of the protectors, and he does his little spinning kick thingy that makes him hard to deal with for melee, so if I had to change something, I might put Rook earlier in the rotation so that his tank can whittle him down for you during the rest of the fight where you aren't focused on him. To each his own, and do whatever works for your raid group. So lastly, when you've got all the bosses past their second desperate measures phases, you need to carefully coordinate DPS so that all the bosses die near the same time. You only have 15 seconds to do this before the bosses will heal, so do this slowly. Try to maybe bring them all down to 10%, then engage to 5%, and then burst them all down. One annoying thing I found out is that if a boss is channeling some ability and they get to 1 health, they won't stop that channel to register that the fight is over. You can see Rook here continuing to pound away even though the battle is lost. For that reason, it might be safest to kill off Rook first when you are in the last few seconds. So there you have it, fallen protectors that will fall over for your raid. Figure out your kill order, don't stand in the bad stuff, and bring the bosses down evenly and you win. Thanks for watching and please comment, like, and or subscribe to the video if you found it helpful and have a good one.